So, hello everybody. First word of warning, since I will name lots of company names, also with prices in this video, I have to say I'm not affiliated to any of those and not sponsored by any of these company and all the gear you see in the video, I paid with my own money. I normally do not say that, but in this video, it's a little bit over the top because it simply shows my way in research how to find a new audio interface. So what is this video about? I'm running here my old trusty setup, which consists of Steinberg UR824 with two Behringer ADA8200, which gives me 24 channels of input. And this runs absolutely perfect for about 10 years now. But in this time, additional gear piled up and I already have to run some things through either a Mackie mixer or some other synthesizers are routed through the modular mixer. And this is not the perfect setup because if you know about Bitwig hardware integration, which works totally nice and it makes your synthesizer feel like a plugin, but you need to have dedicated inputs for each of your devices and also dedicated media channel for that, which is not the issue, but it's really nice to have dedicated separate audio inputs for each of your devices. So then you can use the individual hardware device instruments in Bitwig. I already do work around so several share the same input now because they're coming from the mixer for example but then you have to mute as you also see here in bit we have to mute all the devices or you will get double the audio input which sounds pretty horrible so I was looking into that for about three years now. What can I get? And it only turned out it's crazy expensive to go beyond 24. And it's getting also a bit complicated. So finally inspired by a loop up video, which was released recently, which I also linked down in the video description, I got inspired into looking some other things which I was not so really aware about, for example, what is possible with Dante and Madi. And we will look into that in this video and also check out the options go beyond 24 and even up to crazy 512 inputs. First, it's always good to have an understanding what are your actual requirements if you look into new stuff. So I try to write down my requirements. So I'm looking for more than 32 channels, which would allow me to give all my devices some individual inputs as well as to connect some nice to have gear, for example, rhythm device. I could also get eight individual channels. So I have the bass drum and snare separate, which would be nice to have. And it would also give me some space to maybe acquire some more synthesizers, which would then also fit into the setup. Also, I'm running an expert sleepers ES8, which allows to control CV in a modular rack. And this works via ADAT. So this would also be nice to have at least one ADAT interface on the new interface, which would allow to integrate this device and keep this device into the setup. Then my studio is already cramped up with too much stuff. So it would be nice if this would be a small thing and not a big mixing desk, for example, and also some Sometimes I record other bands or projects and it would be nice if I could take it with me if I would also have in a live situation have the request to record lots of microphones. And so this would be nice to have this running on a laptop and I'm using Windows mainly as my main machine. So Thunderball is a little bit out of the question, which is still an issue on Windows and PCIe cards would work even with my hardware box, but not on the laptop. Nevertheless, these are interesting things to look into. And I will also talk about this a little bit in this video. What would be nice to have options? Yeah, most of the setups are currently now 48K and it would be interesting to look into going up to 96, which always makes the channels to be cut in half. It would be nice to keep my edits as well to have already some additional channels here out of the box. Yeah, we have a, have a little bit of a hen and egg problem here. Should I first explain some technologies or what are the barriers? I decided now to first give you a basic understanding what's out there in the market, what 
protocols and transfer stuff is available and the good old trusty aided optical interface is there since 1991. It's developed by Alesis, so that's what the A stands for. So it's Alesis Digital Audio Tape because it was first introduced with the good old first digital aided recorders and it works up to eight audio channels at 48K with 24 bit and some of the devices support a 96 mode, which then halves your channel count to four. Even it's very old, it's still available in lots of devices nowadays and supported as additional inputs, for example, on also modern devices. Next one is MADI, which is also on the market for quite some time, it stands for Multi-Channel Audio Digital Interface, and it was original developed by the Audio Engineering Society, the AES, so it's also known under the name AES-10. The great thing about it, since the optical version of that allows up to two kilometers of cable length, so if you have here the requirement to distribute it somewhere in your house or also in a live mixing scenario, you are very good to have such a MADI setup. And the first original specification specified 56 channels because it had some kind of very speed option in it. In the 2003 revision, there was then the option to go without this very speed, which freed up some data space. And you can now also run 64 channels, up to 64 channels on a MADI connection. Then there are lots of options which I was absolutely not aware about and I really went down the rabbit hole after the loop up video into researching all these different solutions to use a simple and plain Ethernet. So it's called audio over Ethernet or a short AOE or on a little bit higher level IP solutions, which all have different pros and cons. And let's quickly go through the most known ones. So AVB is an open standard, which is there for quite some time, but my impression is that it's mainly used by Motu. You can also get an RME interface, but that's basically about it. And I looked into the Motu devices, which are very interesting, but they are quite old. I think they're currently from about 2015 and some are already no longer available. So I'm pretty sure something new is showing up for Motu. But it's currently not the case, so I ruled them out. Also, Ravenna is uh, such a standard, which is very rare, and there are not much devices, and the devices there are very expensive as well. Next one, AES-50 is nowadays a bearing uh, only thing, was originally developed by Sony, then licensed to Midas, then Clark Technic bought the patents, which now both belong to Behringer, so it's now used in different Behringer devices, for example, the X32. And if you want to mix different brand companies, things, this is also out of the equation. Then there is Dante, which is also Ethernet protocol, which has the, the advantage that you can use your normal switches with it, but it's a proprietary thing from one company, which we will also talk about a little bit in a second. And there is now AES-67, which is an open standard again, but it's a more low-level standard, which other protocols can base on it or add tools on it. And for example, most of the Dante devices and also the Ravenna devices are compatible to AES-67. So I already ruled out most of them and something to look into is uh, Dante, which is a very interesting protocol. It's coming from a company called Ordinate. Ordinate is having only some small devices so with two inputs and outputs, but they are mainly in the business of creating boards which contains the Dante logic and sell them and license them to third-party manufacturers. You see that if a device has additional Dante support, it normally adds about 600 to 800 euros, which I guess is the cost and licensing cost for getting these boards from Ordinate. It also has the big advantage that you can run it to cable lengths to about 100 meter, which makes it especially interesting if you have, for example, in your home already an Ethernet connection put into your walls and you could use that then, for example, if you have the requirement to connect to different rooms, as for example, Loopop showed in his video, and it gives you a maximum channels of 1024, which is an insane number, up to 192K and a maximum bit depth of 32. 
And it has some other interesting aspects. For example, there are two software solutions. One is done to VIA and one is a done to virtual sound card, which was also totally confusing. And I totally mixed it up in understanding and it's not so easy to get into this topic. So this will be another video I'm doing to look especially into these down to things. So down to VIA is wrapping your normal sound card into a Dante sound card as well as all the applications which output sound can also be connected to the Dante configuration setup. So for example, you could have a MP3 player or an audio player on your computer and then connect it to the Dante network and output it somewhere on the Dante hardware device. And Dante Virtual Sound Card simply creates a virtual sound card on your PC, which gives you 64 inputs and outputs, which you can send then to a hardware device, which might be located in a different room in your building. And also interesting, Dante AV is something new and upcoming, so you can also send video via Dante. So currently the hardware device available are in crazy price regions. But the technology is very, very interesting. You can very easily do picture in picture and send video streams to any monitor. And so this is something definitely to have in mind. So back to the original topics, after we now know something about technologies, what are the channel barriers for inputs? This is something also we need to talk about. I'm specifically looking at inputs. I have no idea why someone would need so many outputs, <laughs> but there are clearly uh, applications for that as well. For example, if you need to do uh, several headphone mixers, then it makes sense to have a lot of outputs or you have a lot of output gear. But also if you have a lot of output gear, you also need at least more inputs to get this back into your system. So I'm always surprised why there are not more solutions which have more inputs than outputs. Something to note about is that manufacturers really like to cheat in, the, in these things and it's sometimes pretty hard to understand how many inputs you actually can transfer to your system because they love to add up inputs, outputs and also internal channels which are also only can be used to be for routing inside of the device are funnily added up and then you have crazy numbers but if you look very very closely it's a much lesser number of channels you can actually transmit to your pc so regular borders you're running into there are tons of devices for small channel count two four eight inputs there is a legion of devices then also for 24 there is quite a good number of solutions but if you go above that number the options get very rare and especially in that number there is only one or two devices which are actually on the market which could implement such a solution. First, another thing we should look into, is there an actual barrier? So is there a limitation of transmission speed which prevents us from going beyond a certain number of channel? And surprisingly, this is actually not the case at all. So if we do a basic calculations, let's say we want to have 64 input channels at 24 bit 48K, which is quite common nowadays, and this adds only to 73 megabit per second we need to transmit and you can also say let's double that so let's have 64 inputs and 64 outputs so we have still only 146 megabit it's megabit this is very confusing so all the transmission throughput speed seems to be named with bit not with byte so it's a factor of eight and if you divide this by 1000 again to go to a gigabyte per second, this is 0.146 gigabyte, uh, gigabit again. Oh, this is confusing as hell. So 0.146 gigabit per second. And if you look at the table here with transmission protocol speeds, you see that even good old Firewire 400 can already do 0.4 gigabit. So even that standard should have no big issues to transmit 64 input and output channels at 48. Okay, and only USB 1 is out of the game here, but to be honest, that's really 
<laughs> that's really just too old. And if we go up now to modern standards, looking USB 3 with 5 gigabit, this table here is a little bit older. We already have USB 3.2, which can do up to 20 gigabit per second. And the new upcoming USB 4 has 40 and also Thunderbolt 3 with 40 or 4, which is not here on the table, has I think 80, if I remember correctly. And also if you look into Ethernet speeds, gigabit Ethernet is there since the 2000s, so also since 20 years. And you can now also nowadays go up to crazy 400 gigabit per second. So there is plenty of space to transmit audio. So the, the issue, main issue with it is just that uh, the, the market is just so small for such devices and the few companies which are there who build such systems really playing catch up. And there is now a certain number of USB 3 devices showing up of new Thunderbolt devices but it's compared to what is possible, it's still light years behind. But something to consider as well is that it's not only the raw data you transmit, need to transmit, there is also the protocol which gives some barriers. And this also names to latency, which might also be an issue with the protocol that you add additional latency if you add more channels because how the protocol works. And there are also other devices on a USB bus or a Thunderbolt bus, which might take some data space. For example, also in Ethernet, if you're streaming some videos in parallel, so this will also reduce the bandwidth, which is available. But nevertheless, speed-wise, there should be plenty of room to transmit your audio channels. And even if you look in USB 2, there is, for example, an RME solution, which we will also see later, which can do 64 inputs and outputs on USB 2 without an issue. So this is totally doable. So looking a little bit more closely at this barrier, so 24 is my current setup. There are plenty of options still in that area. You can get uh, lots of different solutions from basically all the audio interface manufacturers, which allows you to connect two more ADATs and then you're up to 24. And this is in the range below 2000 euros. Or uh, if you check out the used market, you can get such a setup below 1000 euros, which is absolutely great. And I think for most uh, hobby studios, this is more than enough. But let's look into how we can get more. Anyway, so 32 is the next barrier. There are simple solutions, for example, this RME Digiface USB device, which allows you to connect four ADATs and ADATs you can get pretty cheap with a channel. So we are at four multiplied with eight, you have 32 and you can get this around 1500 euros. You can get already such a setup. And the other thing I was not so aware about is that if you look into live consoles, especially if you add a digital stage box, which allows you also to put something in a second room, if this is a requirement, there is quite a nice offering from different manufacturers, for example, PreSonus, Allen and Heath, or Behringer have nice options in that, which is not of interest to me because it adds really big clunky devices here, like a big mixing desk, or even if you go into the rec versions, it adds up to about five or up to seven, eight units, which is just a little bit too much space for my requirements. And there are most of the times they are limited to 48K. And this is something on my nice to have list to go 96. So this is also out of the question. But if you sometimes also want to use something in a live situation, this makes totally sense to look into such solutions, especially because they normally bring very big options for FX processing. They have all your reverb delay and stuff in it. And this might be nice to have as well. So now when we go up to 64 channels, the air is getting very thin up there and also the price increases insanely. And we need to deal with either Mardi or Dante to go into that region of number count. And you also need something then to have to get the option to get into your computer. So you need either an additional USB or PCI interface to connect such devices. And the two things I was eyeing at is the Ferrofish A32, which gives you already 32 input channels on such D sub 24 five adapters, which means 
all already with one unit device you get 32 inputs and outputs but something to not forget the d sub connectors they are quite expensive so even if you get only the cheap solutions with the cables only there are also other solutions which give you proper rack mounts there about 100 for one and so if you get really eight of them you are <laughs> talking about an additional 800 euro number to add to that to use all your channels and this device also features additional aders up to four so you can also connect your legacy thing you have madi and there is also so here's a madi connector and you have also an additional option to dante which will add them 600 to 800 euro to your device as already mentioned and another solution I was also eyeing at is the Orion Plus, which is quite a new device, which is, looks pretty similar. You, so you have also 8D sub 25 connectors for your inputs and outputs. You have also MADI connectors and you get also some effects with that. And the USB version here is only USB 2, so you could also only do 32 channels with it. Um, I don't know why they cannot do 64 as other companies can do that, but that's how it is. And if you use it properly with all the 64 connections, you would need to go Thunderbolt. And I also looked into Thunderbolt on PC, which would also possible with my main board, but it's yeah it's with many question marks and i decided not to go into that direction i also read some mixed reviews about the antelope devices that they might have issues so this was in some a little bit too much question marks and i will talk about what i did in a second but first look also into more crazy region 128 and beyond can be reached if you combine madi and dante so most madi and dante is up to 64 only and if you add both of them you are up to 128 which for example could be done with a combination of four such devices but then we are clearly talking in a price range largely be above especially if you count all the cables to it which would also add up here to 63,200 euros we are in the region of um, five digits so what I did now, I jumped the ship for the A32 because I saw a really nice offering on their website for a used device for the price of the Mardi version, but with the Dante option in it. So I can test both Mardi and Dante. And also with Adat, I think this is already backwards compatible, but also safe for the future. So which means I have 32 channels already on this device. I can use via the four ADATs my all my old stuff. So it gives me still more 28 channels. Not sure if I will keep all of that, but this is already nice to have. And the plan is to test the Dante virtual sound card, which would allow me to connect this simply via Ethernet to my PC. But I'm pretty sure that this will not work out because I already tested the VR solution, which has a high, high, very high unusable latency. So uh, unusable in the meaning of I could not play uh, virtual instruments via that. Uh, I guess that the virtual sound card solution is a little bit better, but I'm not sure if it's really doable in a real situation so but i'm very curious to check this out first and this dante option also gives me the option to run this virtual sound card on my windows laptop as well as my mac mini which i need for testing yeah i can simply route then their output into the device as well and bring it into my normal pc and this would be a very big improvement in the handling of my audio streams. Yeah, but if this fails, I already looked into a plan B. So the plan B was to get a hardware device which is able to talk either Mardi or Dante. The solutions are here USB 2, 3 or PCIe. So also the market for that is very thin. And some of the solutions are sadly not available. So the cheapest ones are the Motu M64 and RME Mardi phase which gives you one MADI 
input and output up to 64 channels in and outputs but the 64 which is sadly the cheapest is currently not available so the rme would be the way to go and um, maybe i will also look a little bit into pcie because this looks pretty tempting to have future proof inputs and outputs of 128 this should be available in a short amount of time but currently also not on the market and yeah there it then gets a little bit pricey and the digiface dante is currently also not available which gives you 120 inputs and outputs as well as higher stuff here from Focusrite and the really insane Clara E model, which you can buy right now, which gives you 512 inputs and outputs. So this is really insane. But also the price is uh, yeah, uh, insane as well, but totally fair for that number of possibilities, I think. So let's see how this will work out. Um, you will see this in my next videos. The next videos will be first about looking closely into Dante, what you can do with it, and, and how this Dante Via solution and the virtual sound card works, uh, if you are interested in that. And then I hope it's in the mail and will arrive shortly, uh, the Ferrofish hardware device, and I'm very curious to look into that as well. Until then, until next time, make some funky music.